Some people were in disbelief yesterday when we were discussing how Cardano's proof of stake system is just flat out better than almost any other blockchains. What those people don't understand is that this is what happens when your project's design decisions are informed by the input of literally the world's greatest experts. Ready? Let's go. You already knew that Cardano was the most decentralized among the top blockchains in terms of block validation with our over, I think it's 2,900 stake pools now. Yesterday we discussed how Cardano was also among the most decentralized large blockchains in terms of token ownership, in our case, coin ownership. What we haven't talked about is maybe the most important thing and that's that Cardano is also probably the very most decentralized in terms of the breadth of global expertise that informs its architecture. Weiss Crypto bills itself as the leading provider of independent, unbiased, trusted ratings of cryptocurrencies. And they've been around for a while in the legacy space and the crypto space. Given that lack of bias and trust is a huge part of their business model, you shouldn't take it lightly when they say that Cardano has far and away the best proof of stake consensus mechanism on the market right now. This is what we were discussing yesterday. It's becoming very, very apparent that it's hard to make a case that Cardano doesn't have the best proof of stake consensus mechanism by a long shot. The question that a lot of people had was, how is this even possible? And so many other blockchains had such a big head start. People were surprised yesterday that so many of the Gen 3 proof of stake blockchains have slashing. If you delegate in their proof of stake systems, you can actually lose your coins. That's not the case in Cardano. And it's because years ago, instead of just cooking up in-house the easiest thing that could get them to market, Cardano did something else. They went out in the world and interacted with guys like this, people like this, guys and gals. This is Professor Elias Koutsoupias. Professor Elias Koutsoupias is a professor of computer science at Oxford who is really into algorithmic aspects of game theory. In fact, he received the Godel Prize of Theoretical Computer Science in 2012 for his work on the foundations of algorithmic game theory. People ask, how can Cardano possibly have proof of stake without slashing? How do you incentivize people to go towards the right behaviors when there's not this coin slashing punishment? It's because Cardano went out and actually interacted with people like this. It's not cheap or easy to interact with the cutting edge of experts in the world in game theory, but that's exactly what Cardano did because they were trying to build the foundations of a system that would be substantially better than anything else out there a few years later. While engaging with Oxford algorithmic game theory professors is how Cardano was able to build a blockchain that has proof of stake that doesn't have slashing. This is basically how Cardano does everything. Can you imagine if a blockchain were able to convene a council of the greatest experts in the world and consult them before it devotes resources to solving any given problem? That would be a better way to go about things, right? I think we can all imagine the way it works in a lot of blockchains is you have a core group of developers and somebody in the ecosystem comes up with some kind of an improvement proposal. That improvement proposal goes before the community. The community kind of decides, they come to a consensus as to whether or not they should proceed with the improvement proposal. And then that group of core developers kind of carries out the proposal and they say, you know, they, they you know, make a certain type of claim about decentralization based on that sort of saying, hey, anybody in the community can come up with an improvement proposal. And we also have a decentralized group of developers. You know, we've got, you know, several different teams, you know, who are all sort of funded from, you know, different places or they kind of represent a diversity of, 
you know, development perspectives. So the development's decentralized and the direction of the development is also decentralized because anybody in the community can submit these improvement proposals. While that certainly fits a certain definition of decentralization, there is actually an even more decentralized way to go about technological innovation. And it's even older than blockchains. <laughs> it's called science. <laughs> We've been doing this a long time. We've had this whole world of academics and science that has been like very much focused on technological innovation for a long, long time. Long, long before Satoshi was ever even thinking about, about cryptocurrencies or blockchains or any of that. <laughs> it, it spans the entire globe. This is a decentralized network of people thinking about technological innovation that spans the entire globe. And it's very well organized. It's very well organized. You have nodes for this network in every major city in the world. <laughs> And there are people in these in these nodes, we call them universities, and they're thinking about how they can push science forward and technological innovation forward. It's not just two or three dozen core developers who jump on a core dev call once every, you know, three weeks or whatever. Seriously, if you watch the core dev calls on Ethereum, it's every time I've ever watched one, it's like 20 or 30 dudes. It's like two or three dozen people. That's it. But this, this is not that. This is an entire globe full of researchers and scientists and theorists, and they're all thinking about all kinds of issues, including all the issues that come up in the blockchain world. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. For instance, this is the website of the International Association for Cryptologic Research. You can see here they have three gigantic conferences. One is called Crypto. It happens in North America. One is called Eurocrypt. It happens in Europe. One is called AsiaCrypt. It happens in Singapore. These three conferences bring together all of the greatest cryptographers in the world. All the very best academics in cryptography are brought together by these conferences that happen around the globe. You've got all of North America, Europe, and Asia. And anybody can go to these and they can submit improvement proposals, right? They don't call them improvement proposals. They call them papers, <laughs> but they can submit improvement proposals to improve the science of cryptography. And the other, the rest of the best experts in the world will look at those papers and they will decide which papers make it into the conference, which ones are worthy of the most, the greatest amount of consideration. And all the experts will look at them and they'll give suggestions and critiques. And no matter who proposed these improvement proposals, they'll get input from all the greatest experts in the world in that particular area of cryptography. This has been going on for a long time. They've had this International Association for Cryptologic Research since 1982. And by 2013, they had not two or three dozen people, but 1,700 people. And they named fellows. And among those, those fellows are a bunch of names you'll recognize if you pay attention to cryptography, even just within the sphere of cryptocurrencies. We've got Adi Shamir, Whitfield Diffie, Silvio McCauley, uh, Klaus Schnorr. These are all names. These are all surnames that you've seen before because we use these technologies in cryptocurrency. These, these people were all a part of this International Association for Cryptologic Research. This is the hub of all that research that produced all that technology that we now rely on in cryptography. This is this global council of experts that in the fictional scenario I described, you know, a smart blockchain would like convene this kind of council and run their ideas past them before they devoted, you know, a ton of resources to trying to build out, you know, solutions to problems. We actually have this council. It exists right now. It's global and it's the, the greatest experts the world can put forward in terms of cryptography. And there is a blockchain that literally consults them before they go about solving a problem.
well, okay, they solve the problem, come up with a proposal to solve it. Then they submit it to this council of experts and get their input before they ever start building. You already know, it's Cardano, and they've done this 114 times. There you go. Uroboros Kronos, Eurocrypt. Composition with knowledge assumptions, crypto. Irrational protocol treatment of 51% attacks, crypto. Cardano actually goes out and consults with this council of global experts, the very best possible experts on cryptographic issues of all sorts. They actually consult with them. And that's why that's part of why it's taken so long to build out, build out the Cardano project instead of just getting to market as quick as possible with a bunch of guesses that came out of a small cryptocurrency community and then were built out by a small group of core devs. Before they build stuff, they actually put it in front of the world's experts, get their input, get their criticisms, get their suggestions, come up with a cohesive idea that nobody in the world can poke fatal holes in. And only then did they build it. It's not just the IACR journals. They submit their papers to all kinds of journals, get them peer reviewed by all kinds of academic experts all around the world in all kinds of different fields. This is a far more decentralized way to direct the build out of your blockchain's architecture. Instead of just putting it up for a consensus style vote within your own cryptocurrency community, Cardano actually put their ideas on the line. They subjected themselves to the possibility of embarrassment, humiliation, or just general ego damage by putting out there to not even a cryptocurrency audience, but whatever audience in this global academic community was appropriate for the area of science involved in whatever question they were trying to answer. That's not an easy thing to do, and it takes a lot more time, which is why Cardano has taken so long to be built out. I'm sure part of the reason, there are other reasons, but it's a big part of it. But because they did this, they somehow managed to not go down the wrong roads. It would have been very easy for the Cardano community to just direct all of the sort of development of the architecture of Cardano. You know, people within IOHK and Emergo and members of the community could have, you know, submitted all the Cardano improvement proposals that resulted in the build out of the architecture. And, you know, the core devs, a bunch of people at Emergo and IOHK could have done all the, you know, sort of all the decision making on how to accomplish whatever was trying to be accomplished in the in the Cardano improvement proposals. That would have been the normal crypto way to go about doing this, you know, or even in the beginning, it would have been more like just IOHK, you know, deciding how to build everything out and not getting any outside input. Instead, they got input from this global network of experts in whatever area of science they were dealing with. I think that's why people are so amazed when you have these discussions about how much further ahead Ouroboros is than a lot of other proof of stake systems, how it's one of the few proof of stake systems that doesn't require coin slashing how somehow through the science of game theory, they were able to come up with a way to not have coin slashing. It almost doesn't make sense to people because they're not used to a blockchain project truly being the product of the best minds the world over. But that's what Cardano is today. That's why it seems so unbelievable to people and why it doesn't make sense to your average crypto person. This is just another reason why I'm glad we're part of this ecosystem and that we've finally reached the end of this first initial phase of the development of the Cardano community. It's going to be fun. Talk to you tomorrow.